Hi guys, i um, going to show you this something a little bit different today. So I'm showing you this heater, and why am I showing you this heater? Well, this is a, a type of heater that's quite common in the UK, but uh, seen relatively little use outside. So uh, uh, let's show you how it works. This is what's called a night storage heater, and we'll take it apart in a minute. Um, but it stores heat using electricity overnight and then release it during the day and it's not much in the way of controls on this particular one just a single boost button and I'll show you what that does later okay so that's the front panel off and uh, what we've got now inside is this internal cover which is sort of a galvanized plate and at the bottom we've got the power input here and one's marked restricted supply which is here and this is the <coughs> nighttime supply and there's a second supply which I think is probably behind another cover can't quite see it at the moment and you can see in here some heating elements and then there's a separate fan heater at the bottom so uh, let's take this apart a little bit further and uh, I'll show you what's inside Okay, so that's the cover off, and you can see that there's this uh, white mat on the top. Let's just uh, get in nice and close. So it's this sort of fiberglass mat, but it's 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 got a material inside in. It's about eight or nine millimeters thick, and the content. I'm not going to open it for you because it's it just crumbles. It's the content is silicaceous aerogel, which is a, an extremely effective and light. Um, insulating agent. So it's used to keep the heat into the heater after it's been charged and the actual heater itself is filled with these bricks. So there's a total of 12 iron oxide bricks in here. So uh, let's go and see if we can take one out. I'm gonna need both hands I'm afraid because these are really heavy. So just one moment. So there we go, one of the 12 bricks has been removed from this medium sized heater and it's sort of a reddish brownish colour from the iron oxide and you know it's it's not particularly decorative it just serves purpose and it's really heavy I can bear it with one hand it must weigh about 15 kilos so there's 12 bricks um, in there the whole heater weighs nearly 200 kilos and <clears throat> you can see the construction here so we have bricks at the back a heating element another brick at the front and this particular heater has three elements each element I think is 750 watts so this is a 2.2 kilowatt heater and you can, they come up to 3 kilowatts so a 3 kilowatt heater would have four bricks and a 1.5 kilowatt heater would have two, two sets of bricks okay so I've taken the bottom panel off now what makes this storage heater different to the ones that most people are probably familiar with and it's the fact that this has got a few extra bits so at the bottom here we've actually got a fan heater so we've got a sort of nichrome wire element on the front and at the back there's a centrifugal blower driven by a shaded pole motor um, and you can see at the back there these pretty coloured wires where the control go for pa or power for that goes so at the bottom here you can actually now see the connections for the heating elements, the storage elements, one, two, and three. And in fact there's a storage, there's a data plate here, um, which actually gives the weight of the heater at uh, 115 kilos, so I think I overestimated it earlier. But there we go, seven hour recharging period, uh, and a 1.5 kilowatt heating element. But here's the real magic, or perhaps I should say disaster area. There's a PCB in here, um, and it contains a microprocessor and a power line modem. So it communicates by injecting signals into the power line with a programmer elsewhere in the house. And you've got things like unique house address so that uh, your heaters don't respond to your neighbor's controller, which does happen in incompetent installations various settings for configuring the behavior of the PCB and so on. 
There are some capacitors on here, but I can't actually make out any markings on them, but they seem to be in pretty good condition, considering that this is a heater and it's 10 years old. <clears throat> and at the bo here, bottom here, we've got a couple of relays. Um, let's see if I've got that in focus. A couple of relays here, one here. This is for the storage elements and one here for the fan heater. So here we've got a second power supply here and these black wires here come from a restricted supply which is up, which is only switched on by the meter between the hours of uh, about 1am and 8am or midnight and 7am depending on region of the country and electricity supplier. So if we actually look on the wall you can actually see, you can actually make out that there are two supplies and one here the daytime supply is connected 24 hours a day and the nighttime supply is 7 hours a day. So the storage heating elements can only fire up on the cheap supply. The fan heater is used to make up temperature uh, in the event that heat is needed during the day. Now, there's not much else in the way of controls here. There's a little thermistor here, probably out on the side, which goes to the PCB. And there's another button up here. which uh, is used to boost. You press the button, it sends a signal to the PCB, which sends a signal to the controller, which uh, adjusts the temperature. What else have we got in here? Well, there's a little flap in here, which, which isn't actually used on this particular model. Um, you can get these with mechanical controls. I've got one with a mechanical control, and I'll probably show you that a little bit later. So there we go. Um, storage heater. Um, there are multiple models of these advanced ones. This is the lower cost one here with just a fan heater at the bottom. Uh, they are available with a more advanced fan heater that rather than having just a resistive element, it actually has vents which draw heat through the brick cavity so that when heat is needed during the day, rather than just turning on the heater, it draws heat through the bricks and releases the heated air out and only once the bricks have discharged does it bring in the uh, resistance heater. So there we go, nighttime storage heaters. Much maligned, generally for good reason, uh, mainly due to inadequate insulation. You can see how thick the uh, fiberglass insulation is uh, on the uh, cavity. Um, and the older models used to have this all the way around, but the newer ones have switched to this uh, aerogel, which is uh, much, much slimmer. But even so, it's they're not ideal, and one of the problems with this electronic control is that the controller has the worst user interface I've ever seen in my life. It is an absolute disaster to program. Um, and, you know, I, I like to think I'm fairly competent with computers and electronics, but this thing really is an absolute disaster. Okay, guys, so this is the uh, little brother to the heater that we saw earlier. I've already taken the front cover off because uh, just to save time, but this one here has got slightly different controls. So let's have a look on here. So we've got an input control and an output control. And I'll tell you what these do. So they come here to this control panel, and this is a electromechanical control panel. There, unlike the a digital heater, this one has a single supply only, single switch supply, so it is only energized seven hours a day. The power comes through to this thing here, which is a bimetallic thermostat, um, and it measures the temperature of the top of the bricks. When the bricks charge up and reach an appropriate temperature as described as set on the dial, the heater, the thermostat turns off the storage heater and uh, keeps the charge at a predetermined level. What about boost heating? Because the other one has a fan heater, what does this one have? Well this one has a spring-loaded knob here called the output knob and when you turn it, it opens this flap on the uh, top of the brick cavity. Turn the output up flap opens, tow it down, flap closes. So there's quite thick fiberglass matting insulation in the top of the cavity. By opening the flap you allow the heat out more quickly. And that's it. There's absolutely no other control or electronics or anything in here. It is just a simple resistive element switched by the meter and by this single 
simple bimetallic electromechanical uh, thermostat. This one, much simpler device. Those PCBs, you can't get them anymore. They're, they're been discontinued, they're flaky, they're buggy, the user interface is absolutely dire. To be honest, I want to get rid of these heaters, but actually, um, and I've been thinking of replacing them with an air source heat pump, but uh, that's not with its own problems, as I'm sure people like Aussie 50 uh, and Heavy Diesel will, uh, will say, but uh, you can now get retrofit kits to fit the mechanical controls to these after you've removed the um, PCBs. So that might be what happens in the next couple of years. Okay, well have a nice day. And this is the controller. Um, I can't really get a very good view of it from here. This room is very, very small. It's only really a little cupboard. Um, but uh, you've got three, it's got zones, so it's quite fancy, you know, it meets all the sort of fancy marketing stuff. You know, I've explained them here, number one, living room, number two, main bedroom and ensuite, three, small bedroom, main bathroom. Um, you know, fairly straightforward sort of stuff. Um, and even tells you off, 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 the, and you can turn, turn it on and off like that. The problem is, is actually programming the temperatures in is nightmare. You've got to use slidey switch. All three, all nine buttons are used during the programming for each individual zone. It's just the biggest flipping nightmare um, of a system I've ever seen. It's the most difficult system to program. People moan about programming VCRs and stuff. This thing is outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. The people that designed it really don't deserve to be in business. It's absolutely appalling. Um, I mean, this, this property has been... I've, I've rented it out. The last guy that was was here had a PhD, was doing a PhD in uh, electronic engineering. He couldn't work out how to use it. It's that bad. It really is. So it really needs to go. It's shocking. Electromechanical, I think, is probably the way to go. Failing that, um, rip it out and upgrade to something more efficient. Because resistive heating is, of course, not very efficient, even if it does use cheap off rate. Uh, up cheap off-peak electricity, which is you know around about 60 to 70 percent discounted over daytime electricity. But uh, I do worry about refrigeration equipment a bit. So uh, that will be all for this video now. Have a nice day.